Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom. I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman. A short update from me and then to your questions. It's Thursday, the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July to our friends uh, in the US. But for Israelis, it's day 272 of the October 7th war. So as the United States celebrates its independence, we're reminded that freedom remains elusive for 120 hostages including eight U.S. citizens still held by Hamas. These hostages, men, women, children, and the elderly from 24 nations are enduring horrific abuse for almost nine months now. This Independence Day, we must demand liberty for all of our hostages. Yesterday, I reminded you about uh, Israeli-American Hirsch goldberg Polin, age 23, who is uh, being held hostage. Today, I want to remind you that Yusuf Ali Zadne is 53 and his son Hamza Ali Zadne, uh, age 22, are also hostages. They, are, they were abducted to Gaza while working uh, milking cows on Kibbutz Khalit near the Gaza border on October 7th. The Ziadnes uh, are Israeli Bedouin Muslims from the Negev Desert in southern Israel. Look at them, please. Say their names, uh, Yusuf and Hamza Ziadne, 272 days. Israel will not rest until all 120 are brought home. Hamas are eliminated together with their terrorist uh, threat to Israel, and we will return our hostages securely to their homes in the north and the south. Now to the sad news of IDF casualties, 677 since the start of the war. Sergeant Alexander Yakiminsky was aged only 19 years old. He was from Naharia. Yesterday he was murdered in a terror attack in a mall in the northern city of Carmiel. Surveillance footage shows the terrorists sneaking up on him from behind, stabbing him repeatedly. Sergeant Yakiminsky, with incredible bravery and quickness, managed to open fire and kill the terrorists before succumbing to his own wounds, but not before saving the lives of other shoppers in that mall. Captain Ile uh, Elisha Lugasi was only 21 years old from Kiryat Shmona. He fell in northern Gaza. And Captain Roi Miller was just 21 from Herzliya. He too fell in northern Gaza. There are no words of mine that can assuage their pain or the pain of their parents and their families. We embrace them and those dear families who have lost precious, precious heroes, sons and daughters in this war for our existence. The price of war is heavy and it's painful. Each casualty is a world unto itself. May their memories be a blessing forever. Next, on the hostage release, release issue, I can tell you that Israel is reviewing the latest Hamas response to the hostage release, release framework, which was received yesterday. To be clear, any progress will be in accordance with the principles established in the Israeli proposal, which has been supported by U.S. President Biden and other mediating countries, in addition to the U.S., Qatar and Egypt. We have been consistent that the war will not end until all of Israel's goals are met. The return of all our hostages, dismantling of Hamas's governmental and military capabilities and moving the terrorist threat, uh, removing it from Israel. Again and again, Hamas has prevented a hostage deal and continues to unreasonably demand that the IDF exit the Gaza Strip and end the war in a way that leaves Hamas's reign of terror intact, which will enable it to repeatedly commit atrocities such as the October 7th massacre. To the north now, where just today Hezbollah has fired 200 rockets, 200 rockets and up to 20 suicide drones at our northern communities. To be clear, Israel is countering this Hezbollah aggression. We will use all and every means necessary to restore security to our northern border and to safely return our citizens to their home. The state of, the state of Lebanon and the terror army of Hezbollah under the guidance of Iran bear full responsibility 
uh, because of this deterioration of the security situation in the north in violation of UN Security Council resolu resolutions 1559 and 1501. Now an update from COGAT and their work coordinating aid into Gaza over the last 24 hours. 302 trucks carrying humanitarian aid went, aid went into Gaza, 257 via Kerem Shalom, 45 via the Eres crossing, uh, and on aid collection, only 164 trucks, only 164 trucks were collected by UN aid agencies and other private sector suppliers. 67 trucks were collected from Erez and 97 from Kerem Shalom. The contents of 1,200 aid trucks simply languishes in the sun waiting for the hopeless United Nations to get their act together and pick it up from the Gazan side of Kerem Shalom. The contents of 3,864 pallets are also waiting to be picked up from the Jalots port on the Gazan side. Now, yesterday, 11 new trucks arrived in Gaza to enhance the humanitarian logistics fleet serving the purpose of aid distribution. These trucks were purchased by UN, agen UN aid, agency, aid agencies and, and facilitated by Israel. Hopefully, they will improve the United Nations logistics in, in Gaza and improve aid distribution as well. Israel strongly encourages, strongly encourages partners to send additional aid trucks to support aid distribution. Further details are available on COGAT's uh, X or Twitter feed. So that's the end of our briefing today. Well, now uh, take your questions, which you should put in the chat, together with your news outlet. Okay, uh, question is um, from Joel Pollock here. Uh, from Breitbart News. Given that it's, it's Independence Day in the USA, what is the most important value the US and Israel uh, share in common? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question, uh, Joel. Well, of course, it's liberty. Uh, it's liberty. It's liberty to live your life as you please with freedom of religion, uh, freedom of um, of being able to be who you want to be, to choose our own leaders, to be a democracy. Uh, we are, of course, the only democracy in hundreds of miles in any either direction, any direction of the compass uh, here in Israel. So I think it's liberty that uh, we share with the American people. We do have so much in common. Uh, we have shared values, which is why we've been side by side, shoulder to shoulder for decades and decades and decades. Uh, none of us here in Israel forget that it was uh, President Truman that was the first world leader that um, uh, accepted the new announcement for the Declaration of Independence in May 1948, 11 minutes, I believe, after this state uh, was, uh, was declared. Uh, and that close relationship has continued uh, till then to this uh, very day. So I would say the answer to your question is most definitely liberty. It's something that we should never take for granted. On October the 7th, we were made very, very clear of, of that fact because uh, our liberty was taken away. 1,200 of our people were brutally murdered. And if these terrorists are not uh, stood up to and defeated, then they pledge to do it again and again but they will not have the liberty to do so. Okay, next question here is from Mayan Lubel from uh, Reuters. Uh, what's the total number of rockets fired by Hamas at Israel since October uh, the 7th? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question, Mayan. I haven't got that, that uh, figure uh, right in front of me right now. I would suggest uh, you uh, contact the IDF. Uh, otherwise, I will uh, happily find that figure for you and pass it on. Uh, next question from uh, Elisa Odenheimer from Bloomberg. Um, can you confirm reports that the uh, that PM Netanyahu is expected to speak with President Biden today regarding the hostage deal and, uh, and that the PM will be meeting uh, Israel's negotiating team? Will the Security Cabinet be meeting tonight to discuss uh, the matter? Um, thank you very much uh, for that question, uh, Elisa. Uh, I've seen those reports, uh, and we will make announcements when necessary regarding uh, those meetings uh, and those calls uh, as and when uh, they take place. Uh, I can't confirm uh, either way um, uh, that, that schedule, but I have seen those reports. Um, 
Okay, are there any other questions if we scroll up for a second? Keep scrolling up there. Okay. Okay, I think that was the last question. So uh, with that being the case, uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Happy uh, Independence Day to um, American colleagues. I've got another question here uh, just coming right at the end. Um, uh, question regarding, um, let me just see. A question regarding uh, Iran and a uh, question regarding Iran and their um, and their uh, conventional and uh, potential nuclear weaponry, uh, their military and nuclear facilities in Iran. Um, thank you for that question. It's a question from Fred Ager. Um, yes, of course we know, uh, Fred, that Iran is behind. Uh, all the terror uh, in this region. Uh, we know, of course, that whenever Iran uh, gets involved uh, in uh, any of the states around us, that state immediately becomes a failed state. Uh, and that is unfortunately the case with Lebanon uh, now as well. Um, so on seven fronts, we're fighting the Iranian uh, threat. Look, uh, the Prime Minister has made clear for decades now uh, the threat which uh, Iran faces this country, Israel, but it doesn't only face this country, it faces the US as well. It's a threat to the US. Uh, and it's a threat to any freedom-loving nation, any democracy uh, with their brand of Islamo-fascism. Look, we're standing up to that threat. Uh, I can't talk publicly about any action, but we know uh, precisely that it's Iran behind all these actions uh, in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the, in the west, uh, in Yemen, uh, on the, um, from the Houthis, from Iraq, uh, from uh, Lebanon, from, uh, from Judea and Samaria, from Gaza. On seven fronts, we're facing uh, Iranian proxies, but we know how to deal with them. We've got a lot of experience. We've dealt with it over many, many years. Uh, we faced them down in the past, and with God's help, we will face them down in the future as well. They're our enemy, but they're also the enemy of the US and the rest of the free world as well. And I think um, most of the world understands that fact. Uh, question here from uh, David Clement. Hamas Health Ministry says the death toll has passed 38,000. Is the estimate uh, in the civilian uh, to combatant ratio still one to one? Thank you. Uh, for that question, uh, David, the latest information I have is that it, that is, is still the ratio. We believe uh, that um, uh, the civilian to terrorist uh, ratio is lower than any other country that has faced this sort of uh, uh, deadly combat with a terrorist organization that embeds itself, embeds itself uh, inside an urban area. That has been confirmed by uh, Colonel John Spencer, who's head of urban warfare at uh, West Point. He made those points, I think, in the last 24 hours again. Um, <clears throat> so that's extremely clear. Uh, and when it comes to, you know, Hamas figures, I would simply urge international media once again that Hamas are a genocidal terrorist organization that did uh, and would like to do outrageous things uh, to my people, to all freedom-loving people, but on October the 7th, uh, our people here uh, in Israel. None of us should be uh, have any doubt whatsoever that they uh, lies are a key part of their strategy. Uh, they uh, it purposely uh, initiated this October the 7th massacre. Um, they knew that there will be a response from Israel. They purposefully embedded themselves among civilians. They do not uh, put civilians into their uh, tunnel network, twice the, twice the size of the London Underground. They do not, they're simply used to sustain the terrorist organization. They misuse funds. Uh, they, uh, in, they subject uh, Gaza's people. Uh, they are a terrorist organization who are adept at lying. So um, any figures which come out from that a genocidal organization uh, should, not, should not be taken at face value. Uh, again and again and again in this conflict, they've come out with instant figures of, of casualties. Um, sometimes they say immediately 400 dead, 500 dead. Uh, we know that this is simply their plan to um, 
gain uh, some uh, currency with um, international media. Unfortunately, too many international media uh, fall for it. Uh, we, on the other hand, here in Israel, are precise, as precise as we can be uh, in the midst of a, a raging war. Um, so uh, I would be extremely skeptical, extremely skeptical about any figures which... Uh, Hamas put out. And of course, uh, to this day, they have not acknowledged the death of even a single terrorist, a single member of Hamas. We know that we've taken out uh, tens of thousands uh, of um, Hamas terrorists. The, the latest figures I have, I think, are 14,000. I will uh, get an update for our next briefing on the number of uh, terrorists that we have uh, killed, eliminated, put out of action. Uh, and um, I'll bring that figure to you perhaps at the next uh, media briefing. So with that, I think that was the last question. Thank you for joining us. And um, um, in the meantime, to do please stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.